Hi everyone, it's Margot again from the IEC group. Um, just waiting for everyone to log in and uh, do what they have to do to watch this next session. Uh, this will be around EMF monitoring in the workplace with Dr. Cyril Burke. Thank you very much, Cyril, for joining us today. We're looking forward to a bit of a practical demonstration on this exciting new technology that you have around monitoring solutions. So please, everyone, if you have any questions, add it to the live Q&A panel. And if we have time at the end, I will shoot those questions through to Cyril. If not, we will answer them post-event. Thanks, Cyril. Over to you. Thank you very much, Margot. Well, welcome everybody to this uh, presentation. Um, we represent Wave Control here in Australia. And uh, if I work my way through the slides here, we'll be able to give you an overview of uh, the type of work we do and how we support industry. So our company is EMF Safety. That's easy to find, emfsafety.com.au. And we support Australia and New Zealand with the Wave Control products. Um, now, uh, at the beginning of the last month, there was an article uh, published in the AIHS uh, news area, and uh, it might be worth having a look if your business uh, provides, for example, mobile phones and uses Bluetooth and routers and Wi-Fi and potentially may be uh, working with uh, power and magnetics and electrical fields and things of this nature, or if your environment um, where you're working has those types of things related to manufacturing and things of this nature. Um, so the article is there in the news area and that covers what's happening in the insurance world when it comes to non-ionizing radiation. Um, I do encourage uh, all the members to have a look at that short article because it really does expose uh, the situation for directors and company liability when it comes to the insurance uh, related to claims in those environments. So please definitely have a look at that and, uh, and uh, see how your company may, uh, may fare if a case is taken against them. So our company, uh, EMF Safety, we supply and support the work of Wave Control and the headquarters are in Barcelona. It's a beautiful city and uh, it's a night view of it. We're in uh, over 60 countries and five continents and uh, we highlight um, the amount of research and development we do because uh, this is a continuously improving and changing environment where uh, uh, modes of transmission are changing, particularly in the telecom world. And the, the problems of EMF, whether it's electromagnetic uh, transmission lines or telecom or power or magnetics, uh, these are all things that sit right inside the uh, safety monitoring requirements for businesses. Now, here's a, a divided slide. You see three different forms of monitoring equipment. On the left-hand side, we've got what we call an SMP2. And really, that's a field meter. So that's a handheld device that's able to interact with a range of probes that look at magnetic all the way up to about 60 gigahertz at the moment in electric field and in the magnetic range as well. And we, uh, we have personal monitors and we have uh, monitors for environmental areas such as labs or in the open air on building rooftops, etc. We're going to have a short look at each one of those to see what types of things uh, are possible. We also do calibration. So an important part of um, wave controls work is the calibration of the equipment. And we actually do this for third party companies as well. So as a result, we're able to do scheduled uh, um, calibrations and plan for long periods ahead and have couriers uh, take the equipment and get it to the testing labs and back in a controlled manner. So no matter what test equipment you currently have, we're able to actually do the testing calibration to all the required international standards. And we do it in a very rapid turnaround by scheduling and managing that. Worth knowing because uh, there's many uh, calibration labs in Australia and elsewhere that can spend many months um, queuing waiting for this type of service. So this is something to note no matter what type of test equipment you may have. 
Um, now, these are the types of companies we currently work with. Um, and in fact, these are our clients. So we have uh, things like the American Defense Forces and the other major companies you see here. This is just a sample of them in the defense world. We have uh, clients, obviously, in the energy world and particularly in Melbourne, there's the Ausnet that we provide equipment to. And in the Queensland area, we've got Energex. Um, we also provide it to uh, the State Grid Corporation in, uh, in China, for example. Uh, we provide equipment to the testing labs around the world and uh, they use that for calibration and monitoring of their own standards. We also provide our equipment for monitoring EMF to the motor industry and major uh, industries. And as you can see there, um, some major companies use our equipment. And the telecom companies, as you can see, also rely on our testing equipment for, for the work that they do. Um, here's an example of the type of thing we get involved with. Uh, this is uh, um, a slide from a presentation related to the work we do in the automotive industry. So when you have uh, a vehicle, obviously moving parts, uh, magnetic fields are generated and things of this nature, and we divide the body up into three compartments and then have to monitor what the passenger and driver would be exposed to and where that sits in the international standards. And this type of work is obviously uh, part of maybe the research and development for electric vehicles and modern equipment uh, that's used in those vehicles. And that particular project uh, required a, a high number of probes that were laid out within the vehicle. And as you can see, that meant then they were all downloaded simultaneously into, uh, into a program that showed them exactly what was happening in simultaneous locations all, all, the, all the way through the testing. Um, and Wave Control really did pride themselves in being able to tailor the monitoring for what manufacturers require. So if you have, uh, let's say, a complicated mechanism, etc., we can work with you to develop those types of monitoring that you want to, to see where, where things are in manufacture and where they'll be when they're provided to the public. Um, we use both the uh, weighted peak method and frequency analysis, the FFT process. And we also provide uh, raw, raw values and also the SMP2, which was that handheld uh, field meter, is actually pre-programmed with uh, a large number of international standards. And as standards become available, uh, owners of those devices get free updates. So once you own wave control equipment, we provide updates to all the international standards as they come in. Uh, and these are changing all the time. And uh, this is a really useful, uh, useful thing for an owner to have. Um, the devices themselves uh, are very um, intuitive to use and they're, um, they're all calibrated to international standards and to standards that uh, um, are required by specialist, uh, specialist users. So the range of probes plug in the top and they can uh, monitor the different ranges with using diode technologies and hall switch uh, depending on which uh, range you're looking at. To give you an idea of the range of probes that are available at the moment, here's the list here with the frequency at the top and uh, the green ones are looking at uh, electric and magnetic and then you've got DC magnetics and you've also got the RF, the radio frequencies up to, uh, up to 60 gigahertz now. So that's um, broadband monitoring, etc. So uh, a device can use uh, any one of these and, um, and provide you with uh, screen grabs and other data export uh, into Excel spreadsheets and other, other, uh, other ways of displaying. And it makes report writing very easy with the way they uh, um, um, allow you to export the data. One of the uh, uh, highlights uh, for this year has been uh, a lot of interest in the use of what we call a wave wave mon or a, a personal monitor. This is where uh, a low cost device can be provided to an employee and if they're working on rooftops or in elevated locations or around transformers and power cables uh, and they can have uh, a broadband one that looks all the way up to 60 gigahertz for RF. So if it was somebody working on roofs or scaffolding um, they could uh, use that type. If, uh, if you're maybe uh, wanting to do magnetics and RF maybe RF up to 8 gigahertz um, and a magnetic field uh, we have uh, a special RF8 for that and for those who uh, potentially are working in a magnetic field area DC through to about 400 kilohertz uh, very popular with the power industry anybody who um, 
may have uh, even a medical concern such as pacemakers and things of this nature. Uh, these are the types of devices that can uh, make sure that the client is in the um, in, a, in a low field or what the field peak to is recorded. Remembering these have a data gathering process. They also have the opportunity to put in uh, a GPS. So the GPS can be built into the device and also uh, altimeters. So if you're up a high tower on a roof, we know uh, at what height uh, and at what location you were um, logging data. And it does it uh, continuously all the time the device is on. They alarm and they provide uh, vibrational and um, sounding um, alarms. So uh, anybody wearing one uh, is immediately aware of, of what's happening and can take uh, suitable action. They also have a fall system. So this is useful if somebody falls from a scaffold or a ladder or something of this nature. The device will monitor the rate of fall and recognize it's a free fall and it will continue to alarm uh, whether the person is conscious or not. It'll just alarm away to try and uh, support them and help others find them uh, in the fastest time possible. So knowing, knowing these uh, devices out there uh, is really useful for some employers who, who previously may not have realized that they could provide these to their, their uh, employees, particularly now as they are starting to realize that the insurance companies will not cover them for uh, non-ionizing radiation uh, effects. So if you haven't put monitoring in place and you're not insured, this really does expose uh, certain companies uh, to, to obviously litigation. Um, here's some of the features of the device and we can we can hold up to a million data logs in in the device and it downloads with dedicated software straight onto a laptop and can be used for uh, record keeping etc etc and they're, they're worn in several ways they can be worn on the arm or they can be uh, put onto a climbing harness or they can be placed on the top of a uh, an extension pole as they're used in the power industry to to monitor the installation of uh, 5g transmitters and other test equipment uh, here's, a, here's an example of how someone might wear one uh, on, on an arm, etc. And um, these came out extremely well. Um, in fact, they're the market leader when it came to um, the high frequency, um, or should I say high immunity within a low frequency environment. So that would be the 50 and 60 hertz power transmission. Um, and we had immunity, as in the wave mod did not alarm as a result of a high electric field up to 30 kilohertz, uh, sorry, 30 uh, kilovolts, um, which is a significant, uh, a significant technical uh, um, achievement. Um, in fact, here's a short video from one of our clients uh, as to how they use it in their environment. So we'll just play this. It's only one minute, 50 seconds. At EQL, we use the WaveMon RF40 personal monitor to alert our workers when working near RFR fields. The WaveMon RF40 is 5G ready and measures up to 40 gigahertz. A key feature of this monitor is that it can be attached to sunrise fittings on operating or telescopic sticks. The performance of the RF40 monitor was superior to others trialed. It didn't false alarm in proximity to energized 11 kV conductors, whereas the others did. Further testing indicated the RF40 did false alarm, but only when directly touching energized 22 kV, and if placed within 100 millimeters of energized 33 kV apparatus. Since the monitor is worn on the arm or harness, it should never come close enough to false alarm even when worn by live lines persons. The monitor has a water resistant rating, but can be further protected by placing it in the provided weatherproof pouch. The monitor performs a startup sequence to check all warning systems are working, including audio, LED lights, and vibration. Use a two-way radio to check the monitor's alarms are all operational. RFR monitors are designed to alarm on set percentage readings of the occupational limit. For non-RFR workers, the monitors are set to the general public occupational limit and set to alarm at 50% and 100% of that limit. At 50%, workers are to immediately move away from the antenna and notify their work group leader. Always protect and look after the equipment by returning them to the protective case provided when not in use. At each um, so that covers to some degree uh, an overview of the personal monitors. 
And uh, we also have large scale monitoring where we have vehicle mounted equipment. And this is being looked at by some of the Queensland councils where they would look at uh, actually fitting one of these monitoring units uh, to the top of their refuge vehicles. So these are the vehicles that collect the rubbish every week. Um, Sorry, Cyril, we've got uh, seven seconds and we'll be cut off. So I just want to thank you and uh, we'll send information through to people. Certainly, no problem at all. <laughs> we look forward to uh, uh, having those questions. Yeah, and we can send the slides as well on our resources page. Excellent, I'll be glad. So just stay you know, with us for the next few days. We'll, uh, we'll be in touch with you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.